Today's learning will focus on vocabulary, specifically word consciousness and vocabulary development. In order for students to develop their vocabulary, we need to have their interest and their awareness in words. So as teachers, we need to promote discovery in words. We need to promote students in being aware of how well they know a word or don't know a word. So it's up to us to make word learning exciting and motivating and allow students some self-discovery around words and really celebrate their learning when they are exploring new words. So we need to be explicit in our instruction and we need to foster that word consciousness, but we also need to allow them opportunities to practice and apply their knowledge in fun ways. So there are specific games that are available to us that we can enrich students' vocabulary with aside from our explicit instruction. So as we engage with print and as we engage with language, we want to be sure that we're giving them multiple opportunities time and time again throughout the school day and the school week and the school months and the school year so that students are really engaged in meaningful reading and writing activities that develop and enhance their vocabulary development. In the classroom, we, when we speak to students, we can say things like, please don't procrastinate or please refrain from talking. Over and over again, instead of just using common language, if we as teachers can be conscious of our own vocabulary to support students, in turn, we hope that they internalize that vocabulary and they will then apply and learn it in their everyday language. Within our literate environments, we are providing texts, we are speaking to children, and we are motivating them to really think deeply about words that mean the same as other words. So synonyms like gradients of meaning. So if a word is happy, what are some words that extend just beyond happy, right? Elated, right? Or what are some things that are, you know, maybe a little bit mean the same as happy, but maybe not the same, right? They're just glad, right? So how do we engage students in that type of thinking in our everyday experiences within the classroom? So why did an author choose to use a word is really important. And that reciprocal pro process between reading and writing is when we ask students to use specific language to impact their own readers. So we're not expecting students in, in their everyday life to become authors of books. So if you pause and ask yourself, why do we ask students to write? It's only then that you can say, well, I'm hoping to improve their language development. I'm hoping to improve their comprehension of language. I'm hoping to improve their comprehension of reading. So that in turn, in that work, we're asking them to go deeper with their own vocabulary in writing so that they too can be able to pause and think about antonyms or synonyms or why you may spell a certain word a certain way that's a homograph, right? What does it mean particularly in the sentence that I'm trying to convey? So it's through that process and when we think about assessment of vocabulary, there are not a lot of great assessments out there. So there are some standardized assessments that ask students for synonyms of words or antonyms of words, but it's or give you a word in the context, but it's through everyday oral language and truly through the application when they are speaking and writing that we can determine or progress monitor if students' vocabulary um, are really developing and building in a way that would meet grade level expectations. So within the Common Core, right, we it asks us as teachers to think about reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And so vocabulary is really that place where we're studying it from multiple places. We're studying it 
when we read aloud to students and discover new words. We're teaching vocabulary to, to students as they are studying Greek and Latin roots. And really progress monitoring vocabulary when we see the application of the words that we've taught explicitly or words they may have learned through their own reading process or through their own language experiences. So it's up to us to be able to pause and take a look at those pieces of writing or think anecdotally about some notes around language development periodically throughout the school year so that we can determine if students are making progress with their language. So a simple assessment of just we're giving students 20 words and we're assessing whether they can write the definitions of them, that's one aspect in one moment in time. But really knowing a word is being able to apply it and use it in your everyday life. According to the National Reading Panel, by grade five, 80% of words are learned through direct instruction, usually by a teacher. So we have a lot of impact on students if we think about 80% of their words. So we, when we think about development of students in literacy, we think about them in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade, really learning how to decode and put words and sounds together so that they can create words and they can write words and that they can read text and read text fluently by grade three. And so by grades five, we're expecting students have practiced that work enough so that they can begin to add content area or specific vocabulary so that it's in their content areas, they can take the the words that they have learned thus far and then be able to add layers of academic language within their everyday oral language and their understanding of print. So our explicit instruction to increase vocabulary is critically important and directly related to comprehension. So if we expect students to read grade level text we need to expect them to be able to have the vocabulary ne necessary to access text or to be able to understand uh, questions that are being asked to students. So that specific academic language embedded within questions really meets grade level expectations and the standards that are expected of our children by grade level. So we need to be sure that they have rich oral language experiences so that we pause and take time out of our day to be able to allow students to talk, to talk about words, to talk to one another, to apply vocabulary that is expected of them to, and to expand their sentence lengths so that they are not impacted by the syntax of language and they're able to apply the explicit instruction that we have provided for them and then engage in some discovery work through wide readings, through the books that we choose, and through the writing opportunities that we give them to be able to apply Greek and Latin roots or think through sorting of words. So which words have the same prefixes and why and how does that impact the meaning of the root word. So it directly correlates to grammar as well. So when we're thinking about vocabulary instruction and we're thinking about the assessment process, we want to be sure that we assess all areas within vocabulary development. So prefixes, suffixes, root words, do students understand how words work? And then what is impacting their vocabulary development? So vocabulary is very um, differentiated within students with their experiences at home with vocabulary and their experiences with the language itself. Some of our English language learners are really just learning to speak to one another and so this layer of academic language, especially in the upper grades, becomes very difficult. So it's up to us as teachers to really think about what is our assessment process, what are we noticing about students specifically, and what evidence do we have? So we can give some screening assessments when we think about vocabulary and vocabulary development, 
But then as we pause, what are the assessments that we're going to pick and choose? And so our reading has given us some um, ideas of uh, vocabulary assessments, but in, every, in our everyday classroom, we have to think about how are we using them systematically? Who, are, who is administering these assessments? And how are we being sure that we're giving students that rich and robust instruction that they need to be able to apply the knowledge that we're teaching them? So there are a lot of skills involved in dictionary work, right? So there's a lot of words in the dictionary. And more often than not, students have difficulty even using a dictionary. So even studying language like, you know, what, what letters are in the middle of the alphabet? Which ones are at the beginning of the alphabet? Where would we find those in the dictionary? You know, some of those dictionary games where they're like, what's the middle letter in the alphabet? Can you open to the, are, were you in the right place? Right, having some of those conversations so that students have the tools and have the strategies in their metacognitive thinking so that when they're coming to words they don't know, they have the skills and the tools to be able to say, what is my first step as a reader or writer to uncover the meaning of this word or to be able to write this word? What do I know about how words work? And then how can I apply that knowledge moving forward? So that morphemic analysis is important for us to pause and think about. So explicitly we're teaching it, but then how are students taking it upon in, in themselves as readers, writers, and speakers, and listeners, right? So are they comprehending what we're, we're um, reading in our interactive read-alouds? And how are they engaging in their independent reading, but essentially also in their writing? So we know incidentally they'll pick up vocabulary and we know that we have to be very intentional with our vocabulary instruction. So within students learning of words, they need to be aware of how well do I know a word? And I think many of us can sit back and think about a time when we knew we knew a word, but if we had to write a specific and clear and cohesive definition of a word and given examples of what the word of what it is or what non-examples of what it isn't sometimes we have to think more deeply about some of these categories of words so you know is it a word that I've, I've never really heard of that word or I think I've heard it before and maybe it fits within this context or I just have some vague knowledge of it or I really know how to use that word I know how to explain that word and I know how to apply it to my reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And we often wonder, you know, how many words do students acquire every single day, right? So um, children in ages one to four are really acquiring 2.4 words a day, according to research, and 860 new words a year. And then essentially again in their development, in students in grades K to two, right? It's so the same um, 860 words per year. And then as students are starting to add academic vocabulary and um, expanding their context of words within certain subject areas, we can see that they are acquiring 1,000 words per year. So as teachers, we want to think about different students already have other opportunities and they come in with a stronger language base in order to impact their vocabulary and vocabulary development. So students who are at risk really need more direct instruction, more experiences with language, and really a rich and robust literate environment in order to impact what happens to them ex at school because outside of school, they may not have the opportunities to be able to build and develop their language uh, development. So our choice of words in what we decide to teach is it's really important. So when we're engaging in our interactive read-alouds or we're thinking about what students are reading independently or content area uh, words that will, will be necessary 
or may impact students' comprehension, right? We really want to think about these tier two words, right, that are frequently used and can impact um, students' uh, comprehension. So many times we will notice that a student is struggling with comprehension and they've really developed their decoding skills. So as you're thinking about assessment, and you're thinking, why is this student having difficulty? Or why isn't this student meeting grade level expectations? We want to first look at, can they decode and read the words? And then essentially, what is it about comprehension that they're having so much difficulty with? Right? Is it the vocabulary impacting them and they don't understand the questions? Or is it the um, structure of the language? Or is it something specific? But oftentimes the tier two words, right, really impact students in the way authors convey information and the way people speak, right? These are words that they have never heard of. And so oftentimes there'll be gaps in their reading because they don't have the metacognitive strategies to be able to pause, to be able to think about how is that word used in context? Like, so what do those strategies look like? What do I already, is this like another word, right? So what are those metacognitive steps that help me as a language learner, right? So as students are engaging, even with the English language, what are those strategies that I need to engage in and what do we need to teach explicitly so that students have all of the tools and the resources necessary so that when they do come to words that they don't know, they have ways of figuring out a word, whether it's dictionary, morphemic analysis, Greek, like all of those strategies, how do they use them in steps so that they have um, the, the tools so they can move ahead as readers and writers. So we know essentially tier three words are really specialized words. They're content specific and those are words that we're also teaching explicitly, but it's really these tier two words that impact students the most. So, you know, as early on as, you know, explained or shouted and whisper, all of those gradients of meaning that are specific to a context and that impact comprehension, whether it's in um, listening or um, reading, right? Those are things that really can impact a student's comprehension. So through our assessment process, we really want to dig deeper just beyond answering questions about the text, but really getting word specific around the meaning of words and having those conferring conversations with students and really collecting the data necessary to be able to determine where a student's vocabulary is, which, which is very challenging. It's not an easy task. So to uncover it requires layers of discovery for us as teachers and really being systematic in thinking about how we will progress monitor this development and how we will plan our explicit instruction. So we want to make sure that we include um, in our instruction student-friendly explanations. We want to be sure that, that we create the examples for students, that we can really communicate perhaps it's something that may have happened in your classroom. So something that's meaningful to the students, not something that's just tech-specific, or specific to our own life, but really something that connects to the students and their, their development. We want to make sure students are actively engaged. And so we want to monitor within our literate environments how this is going for our students. And oftentimes making it be a very successful environment. So when we're giving them examples or non-examples, providing those scaffolds necessary, Perhaps we're giving them a couple of choices, right? Is the word this? Could it be this or this? Which one do you think and why? So those oral language experiences 
that we provide in the classroom that pause and allow students to turn and talk around what, what makes you think that, what are the examples, how do you connect that as students, and then our listening process so that we, when we back out of their, the explicit instruction and really allow ourselves an assessment lens, we truly are listening to students and thinking about what are they understanding and learning around text. So when we are reading aloud to students, we want to make sure that we are reading for meaning first, right? It's so essential that we do that. And sometimes when we think about vocabulary, we're so, we can get so trapped within the read aloud of a text that we actually explain too much during the reading of the text and we impact how students are taking on that meaning. So we may target words so that we know later after the students have read for meaning that we can explain the words more deeply in a more systematic and explicit way, but truly that we want to um, pause and notice words, but then continue reading and go back later and provide that explicit instruction. So during independent reading, it suggests, uh, our research suggests that we can target some words. So essentially, um, if it's in a content area and you have specific vocabulary that you feel will impact a student's um, reading when they're reading independently without any type of scaffolds, you may highlight some of those words. Um, and, and definitely, there'll be opportunities within curriculum material that many of you have core programs that require you to reread a story several times during the week with a different lens for comprehension, right? But you may be targeting a couple of different words on Monday and then a couple of different words on Tuesday. So by the end of the week, you may have, you know, 20 or 25 words that you have taught more explicitly because you've had multiple opportunities with the text. Some of you may have multiple opportunities with a longer text or multiple opportunities in a touchstone text that you go back to that mentor again and again throughout the year. And so you may have a trajectory of vocabulary within that text. So as teachers, we really need to be experts in our ability to choose words, our ability to choose um, text with rich oral language and words that will help students. So sometimes it, it feels, oh, so motivating that we pick this word that nobody's ever heard of and we're going to choose these five really difficult and complex words because students are gonna study these all week. But essentially, they don't really guide their comprehension and they don't really help them in their everyday language or their everyday writing. So we want to pause and think about really what words we choose, what words do we highlight, and then how can this work be, be developed over time? So it can't just be on Monday's vocabulary day. It has to be this developing self-awareness of words, word consciousness. We're trying to give them those applicable strategies that again and again students can use as purposefully as possible as readers and writers. So we want to be sure that we have multiple measures for assessment and that it is tied to instruction if possible. So there has to be opportunities for, for us to create those connections between words and what do I do with them? How do I hear them in text? How do I write about them? So multiple experiences with words so that students can embed them over and over again. When we learn to do something, we can't just do it one time. So we have to hear words multiple times in order for the instruction to really impact our students' growth. So we can include standardized assessments. There are some screeners available, um, core screeners, uh, the uh, picture, uh, word picture vocabulary assessments. A lot of those are standardized assessments. So the standardized assessments really in, in the screening 
or looking at it at different times of the year, it's really that baseline or global measure that we can compare students to all other students at their own age level. I caution using grade level because uh, students can be different ages. And if we're trying to think about um, a grade level, there could be a student a year older or even two years older in a grade level. And we need to think about their age, like what would their expectations be around their age rather than their grade. And I caution you with grade as well, because sometimes if a student is advanced in an area, uh, parents can interpret that as meaning that their student is perhaps, you know, should be moved to the eighth grade when we know that there are a lot of other factors involved in grade level expectations, not just on one particular assessment. And so we want to be select and we want to be purposeful on multiple times of year when we will consider and look at vocabulary development and really screen those students that may be at risk and need more direct instruction or small group instruction around vocabulary where other students may be meeting grade level expectations and they may not need those explicit interventions. So it's up to us to think about the measures that we have or measures that are available to us within our schools and really dig a little bit deeper because I think vocabulary is something that is discussed to be important, but the trajectory of learning and how that happens in schools, it seems to be tied to so many different areas. It's hard to come up with those assessment measures that are easy and accessible for teachers so that it impacts your students growth within the classroom. So many times you're teaching it, but we're not taking enough time to assess it. So when we think about students and how many words we're going to expect that they would really take on and learn through our interactive read alouds, right? They may be learning three or four words in a week, maybe one or two in each book. And you can see by grade level, it really um, it really increases so that in students in grades two to eight, right, if you have one passage uh, or one selection of text or one chapter or that you're going back to it again and again with your strategies, right, there can be eight to ten words. So it just depends on the complexity of the words and it depends on your expertise in using data to know where your students are with vocabulary development. So we want to intervene as early as possible for our students with vocabulary growth and development because over time, if the students don't have the base or the foundation, they always seem to be at a deficit so they can't meet grade level expectations for text. And so if we can provide further instruction and further intervention and experiences with using oral language and purposeful talk in the classroom, and really allow students to engage in sort of a productive struggle so that they're engaging in the learning process and there's less teacher talk and more student talk, then we will see that growth and development. But we want to be sure that we are including the progress monitoring strategies necessary to support our students. So um, this concludes our lecture for this week and I look forward to seeing you again and learning with you.